I lied. There are going to be two more videos tonight. Sorry, but I want to get these done while they're fresh in my brain. So, um, in my last video, I talked about intonation. Now I'm going to talk about um, descending lip slurs. So, in my packet, these are in there. I have to look and see what day, what week, and what day. Um, so I think it's week two. Yeah, week two. In week two, I introduced some descending lip slurs. Um, these are here for a very specific reason. You don't really need to know that reason, but I'm going to tell you here in the video. So that, that's true of a lot of the exercises, by the way. With this resource, I challenged myself to uh, create something where you didn't need to know what you were doing. All you had to do was go do it. Um, I was inspired by the fitness industry. I was following a bodybuilding plan. Um, and I was happy with the results. And, you know, the, the, the bodybuilder in the videos didn't explain all the science behind it. And I think that's true in, in like a lot of bodybuilding. Like you don't need to know the science. You need to know which muscle you're working and how you're going to work it. And then you just need to keep the form right. So I wanted to create something where people could just go, you know, bing, bing, boom, run down a routine and get better. And then if they want to know why, they can dig a little deeper. They can call me, whatever. Uh, but they're going to walk away from a four-week Arbon plan better than when they started. Maybe a lot better. Um, so this is one of those exercises. This is the descending lip slurs. I'm going to tell you what they do just straight off the bat. So these are aperture exercises. One of the first problems I see with trumpeters, particularly young ones, like we're talking really little, like fifth grade, um, is, you know, we, part of it is the way we teach it, but, um, you know, we stick our, our little lippies in the mouthpiece and we go, ah. you know, we make a little buzz. The problem with buzzing like that, you know, is your lips are really far apart. You are driving a lot of air through those lips to get them to vibrate. Ah. Like you're vibrating a lot of lip and it takes a lot of air. So drives the aperture apart. And a lot of people never kind of bring it back in. I think it's Phil Snedeker who talks about this a lot, which is that like the center of the trumpet isn't low C. We teach it first because it's like the easiest note to get, but uh, the middle of the trumpet is like, I think it's actually a C above that. I think it's a, I don't know if that's middle C, C on the staff, right? This note, that note, that's the middle of the trumpet. We can sort of like think about the trumpet above and below that note. So um, the first, the first exercise is just a descending lip slur from a G to a C. benefit to this is that those low notes G and F sharp that people kind of get really wigged out by um, is not nearly as open as you think it is so it's it's really just a, another note it's kind of like in the middle of a trumpet right you want the middle to feel like the low and the high like you're not really changing a lot one of the things that those really fast chromatic uh, studies do for me is remind me of that principle but like the really lowest excerpts on the trumpet you know are not really that low if you think about them with a slightly narrower set with the aperture <laughs>
physical endeavor isn't there. You don't have to vibrate this huge, massive lip. Like it's it's a fairly narrow little string there. So that's that. Let's keep going. The next one up, I think, is just a C. C, G, C. So the, the only danger to this, and I think that's actually all that you need to do is just like C down to C and you're good. That's why it's only in there um, up to C and it's why it's only in there like three minutes a day. So it just doesn't take much. All you have to do is work on it like every day for three minutes and it'll improve. So one little, one little bobble to watch out for is like consciously trying to manipulate the aperture smaller that doesn't work all you have to do is start a little higher and, and that's it that's it like just a c right you it's not a special maneuver you don't have to micromanage any of this if you want something to do you can air attack it sure you're absolutely optimal with that uh, aperture um, the problem is if you start manipulating you you first of all you cancel out like 30 percent of your uh, of your resonance and that is as soon as what I mean by resonance is like also the ease of the trumpet you need that you need 30 knock out 30 percent and you're done like if it's a reasonably competitive environment that sound is done um, yeah, so yeah, so you cannot manipulate that. Um, I manipulate it all the time. It's a constant battle. I have a reminder, like taped right there. Um, it's kind of a long quotation, but I'm not going to read it. But it's essentially like, don't manipulate, right? So I spend quite a bit of time every day s singing through the trumpet. Sometimes actually literally singing through the trumpet <laughs> excuse me just to make sure i'm really playing with as much ease as possible and i'm not gripping this i'm not ripping this i'm not doing anything you know anywhere else i'm not using my bicep or my shoulder any more than I need to. Uh, and I still do it. So I tell my students this, that if, you, if you've gone through your session, your practice session, and you've reduced your amount of physical engagement with the trumpet, 1%, 0.1%, you've reclaimed a huge amount of, of sound and vibration and ease. It doesn't take much. We're not talking about seismic shifts in like, like if, oh, my eyebrows are being manipulated. It doesn't take much. All I gotta do is make a little progress and the payout is huge. It's dividends over, over day over day, right? First of all. And second of all, like the difference between a great, a good sound and a great sound is, is massive but it takes very little, it actually takes less effort to make a great sound, right? So, sound. 
And the literally the whole time I was thinking, don't manipulate. Air through the horn. Sing. Resonate. Um, okay, that's it for now. It's a really simple exercise. I hope some of this, I know I'm long-winded. You can turn me off. You can backtrack. I don't, this is um, fun for me. I love talking about the trumpet. Uh, I love talking about sound and vibration. It's it's super fun. Um, that's why I'm doing it. That's why I like teaching. So fast forward through it if you don't like it. Um, enjoy. Enjoy the exercise. Enjoy the journey. I'll see you next time. The next video is going to be about why you should maybe probably own a sea trumpet. <laughs>